Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Berlitz and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without costing you anything extra and all the links, they will be, as always, in the description together with the timestamps so that you can jump to the point of your preference. And this week, let us start with the release by Ermanda. Uh, one member of the RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene, that is Unknown Oceans, complete edition. And it is the complete edition because it was already released as part of the Half Asset Jam that we mentioned before in another episode, but it is now finished. So it started as a 240 characters mini game, and now the solo journaling game is complete with full layout and all of that that you can expect from a full game. In it, you play as a sailor that is in charge of a ship traveling through unknown oceans, describing on your journal what happens by your interaction with everything around you. So you use a D4 die or a compass, if you have one, so that you can then interact with the world around you on this solo journaling game. And I thought that the idea was amazing. So check it out. It is on HIO, the link, the description and all that, okay? On news, although not directly about the indie tabletop RPG scene, the news that Kickstarter will start going towards crypto and actually more blockchain is bound to generate ripples in the scene. Because for most creators from the global north, because global south usually they don't have access to the Kickstarter at all uh, as producers of content, only as consumers, so you should already be aware of that. But for most creators of Global North, the cloud, the crowdfunding platform that is Kickstarter is their go-to to new releases and for crowdfunding in general, okay? And although they were already oblivious to the needs, uh, voice, requirements, uh, opinions, and everything that the indie tabletop RPG scene was bringing up until now, Actually, this decision is probably one to generate the higher impact and not just on how small creators will face it, also how some consumers will face it as well. And we will see how the big players that were already using Kickstarter as a pre-sales uh, kind of, a pre-order kind of platform, how they will actually face it and how they will take this new information okay but on a brighter side actually uh, polygon published an article highlighting some indie tabletop rpg titles that they deem to be the best indie tabletop rpgs of 2021 you are probably uh, already familiar with most of the titles that were mentioned there if not all of them because if you follow us closely because we mentioned them all but nevertheless it is a great thing that we have indie titles mentioned on a big media outlet that is polygon because usually we don't have this kind of covering of the indie tabletop rpg scene and we have two titles coming from rpgc the tabletop scene of uh southeastern asia one of them is Ark by Momatos, and one is Gubat Banwa by Maka Patak. And one from RPG Latam as well, that is CBR plus PNK by Emmanuel Melo. And two other titles, on one of them is Dot Dungeon by Bats, and Wonder Home by J Dragon and Possum Creek Games. But also, Besides these titles, be sure to check the honorable mentions that they have there on the bottom of the article. They don't have a lot of covering on the article itself, but they are great titles, such as like uh, Slayers, Guns and Slingers, Orbital Blues, and Leechcraft, uh, among some other ones. So check also these other titles that were in the honorable mentions, okay? On Gems. Because we always talk about gems, there is the Tiny Tom Jam. The Tiny Tom is a book of single page RPGs going to be printed by Longtail Games in 2022. Okay, this is a gem to collect the submissions for it, for this title to be published. There are plenty of rules, so you should 
give a proper look to them. Uh, one of them, most important ones, is that it is a single page A5 format or equivalent in uh, North American measurements, but also that you need to agree with the licensing agreement that they provide and it need to be done for every title that you submit. You have a maximum of three titles and you have to agree independently for each one of them before submitting, okay? This is some of the most important ones, but they have some other rules. Check them out before submitting. On articles, this very interesting piece of Food for Todd by Federico Son, uh, another member of the RPG Latam community, they, this time around, they talk about uh, dice and our attachment to dice and using them on games. You should definitely give it a read. Uh, it is titled Stranger Kings Dice and Authority from Beyond. I really thought that it brings some ideas and this is the kind of discourse that can benefit the scene, not just create some clout and uh, more discussion actually it, it brings really some value to the scene and to what we are trying to do as not just the scene of indie tabletop games but also the game design in general for this week this was a short episode i believe that's it if you like the video like the video share subscribe you know how internet works you can pay me a coffee on coffee. you can buy my games on itch.io, you can support some of the games that I am working right now, like MiniBX, and I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!